uh, without God and y'all's prayers, I know uh, it would not have gone well for us. Uh, thankful we are all healing, but slow, except for Cody. He, re he rebounded quickly, and Emma didn't get it. Thank the Lord for that. It says, loving prayers, Jimmy and Becky. Uh, and it says, uh, praying we see all of y'all next Sunday, maybe. Uh, I know Jimmy tested, he, he went back and was retested. He's negative now. So, uh, and she was going to be tested, and I don't know, you know, what the, got to wait for those things. But anyway, uh, thank the Lord for that. Uh, and what uh, Sandra alluded to in her prayer about uh, the baby, uh, Chandler and Andrea, you know, they're having, uh, well, they're having their baby today, and it should be here by noon, they're saying. The last word we got was that uh, she was all ready, and they were prepping the room and everything, so it should just be any any time, you know, as, as fast as it, if it go, continues to go as fast, and as easy as it has so far. So, anyway, we, we hope. Uh, let's take our uh, our bullets this morning. Uh, you know, we we uh, were collecting lotions for the Mesquite Tree Nursing Home uh, through the day, and we thank you to all those that brought lotions. You're such a blessing in doing that. Uh, Homer Bound. Uh, we're collecting those personal hygiene items uh, for both men and women, and we're collecting them through December the 16th. So, you know, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, comb brush, deodorant, razor, shaving cream, uh, mouthwash, whatever, you know, those personal things that you use all the time and trying to do it, so that's what we're, we're collecting there. And, Whatever we get, we're going to take to them. So, um, and then uh, about our Thanksgiving dinner, you know, the church thanks each and every one that signed up to bring food for our annual Thanksgiving dinner. However, due to the recent rise and all the COVID cases and all that kind of stuff, um, we're going to have to cancel it. So. Uh, but I thank you for uh, your wanting, but uh, we're not going to be able to do that, and there'll be no midweek service that week during Thanksgiving week. So uh, just continue to think that. So, uh, and then of course on the back it talks about Christ brings kindness, uh, something that Billy Graham had said. About that, so I hope that you'll you'll read it and uh, and be able to uh, take it to heart as well. All right, let's continue singing. We'll turn to page two forty. The Lily of the Valley. We'll sing all three verses. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse him, make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my safe. He tells me every care on him to grow. He does in the other valley the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tire. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and down he keeps me by his fire. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the 
know, in the at, towards the end of the book of Second Samuel, we find that the sun is beginning to sink on, or to beginning to set on David's life. His praise for God continues to climb and to soar into the the heavens. We find in that twenty second chapter of Second Samuel, it's like the uh, that ver that that chapter is like the the snow cap that you find on the mountains. You know what you would. You, you would desire to see and, and those things and uh, you know it, it, it's such a blessed thing so let's uh, take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 22 and as we find our place we're going to we're going to see uh, David climbing and soaring into the heavens there. And in chapter 22, let's stand as we, if, when we find uh, our place there, let's stand as we read his word this morning in, uh, in verse 1. It said, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. In the day that the Lord hath delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Verse 2, And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my Savior, Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. You know, we find that in this, this is David's song unto the Lord. And not only is it His song unto the Lord, but He's singing it for you and I today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do come thanking You, Lord, for Your many blessings. Lord, we, we thank You for the opportunity that You give us. Lord, to come into Thy house this morning. Lord, we, we thank You for Sunday school. And, and Lord, uh, uh, the songs in which we lifted our hearts up to you with. Lord, we now ask that you would allow us to use your word, Lord, and to see what uh, you have written within the confines of it, Lord, for us to see and to understand this morning. And Lord, that it will apply. We won't be the same people when we leave here that we were when we came here this morning. And it's with that that each and every one standing said, Amen. And we can be seated. You know, we we look and, and we see that David sang or, or spoke with confidence and commitment and he describes his relationship with the Lord. And uh, and he does it without even batting an eye or wondering or perhaps, oh, oh my gosh, who may be listening or, or, or what. For it doesn't make a difference to David because David is going to be speaking and, and with confidence he's lifting up his heart unto the Lord. He's singing this song of praise unto the Lord. We find that His words are, are spoken with concrete certainty as He begins singing there, The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my rock.
my rock. And in that, in those five small, short words, we find that, that David is literally saying that I possess him. He is my life. He is mine. And you know, I wonder today, is he our life? Is he your rock this morning? He can. But you must make him your life, your foundation for your life. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay. Then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We can have no other foundation. If, if we are true, born again believers, there, there can be no other foundation of our life that can be laid than the foundation of Jesus. For He is our rock in which we stand. David says that the Lord is not only His rock, but He is His fortress. His fortress. So we wonder, and this is what we're going to be concentrating upon this morning, the, the Lord as our fortress. So what does it literally mean that the Lord is my fortress? What does it imply to that foundation that has been laid upon the Lord Jesus of our lives? Well, firstly, we must realize that as our fortress, He is our barrier of protection. We look and, and you can you can go down onto uh, perhaps the uh, the coast and things, and you'll see that they'll they'll make those barrier reefs out there, and they're man-made and and they're but yet they're made to help protect the 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 coastline there the the land from the storm. We find here in, in, in these verses that David says the Lord is my rock and my fortress. I give you this morning, He is our barrier reef. He is our barrier of protection. Nothing can happen to you without God's consent. Now, it, that's a hard thing to realize because a lot of people, they, they look at things in the wrong way. They look at a lot of things and they say, well, you know, how can bad things happen to good people? Well, all I know is, is that they can't totally be bad for us if God allows them to happen. And He gives them consent to happen in our lives. We look in the book of Titus this morning. Uh, in chapter number 2. And in verse 13 and 14 it says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. We look and we find in that verse 
if we want to realize what the Lord or what Paul is trying to say there in this book of Titus unto us, it's what the Lord is trying to speak through him to tell us is that we have to understand this word peculiar. I've been called a lot of things in my day. <laughs> you know, uh, some of it good, some of it bad. And uh, But peculiar. Now, that's a stranger. But you know, we have to realize that the word literally means to be. And it also means around. So if we could take this into perspective, and if nothing can come our way that God doesn't consent to, then we must realize and we must think about a circle that surrounds a dot. Alright? And we are surrounded by the Lord. We have that hedge of protection around us. Now that's not to say that some things are not going to happen to us. Because they are. Because that's life. It's the way it is. But nothing is going to be able to touch us without His consent. Now this was the same thought. This is the same thing that Satan was complaining about to God uh, and concerning uh, God's care about Job. If we turn to the book of Job, and we turn to verse or uh, to chapter number one, and we see there in verse nine and ten, it says, "Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all?" that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Now, uh, Satan is sitting here complaining to God because God, hey, you put this hedge of your protection around you. You put this hedge around about his family. You put it a hedge of protection around about all that he has, all that makes Job Job. You protect him. But in those same verses now, we find that Satan is also asking a question and, he, and he's saying, now Lord, if you hadn't put this hedge around him, would he still be praising you? Would he still be lifting you up? Would he still be the Job that you know, even though your protection is taken from you? So we, as we, we look, we, we must realize that God cares for you and me. He, he cares for the believer that loves Him. He, he cares for the believer that uh, is worthy unto Him, that, that takes the truth and stands upon it, that takes His love and, and issues it out to the people and to other people. And all of those things, the, the same type of things that God affords and does to us that He allows us to do to others. So we wonder, is 
If God is our fortress, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, it's a very simple process to understand. And God's Word addresses it. And we have to realize the, the, the answer is that God has allowed it, has allowed what we consider bad things to come our way God allows it for our good. According to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Trials do several things for believers. Uh, we must realize that a trial will develop our faith. Or our character. A trial, uh, so it, it would develop things like patience and faith and compassion, humility, and a dependence on God. A lot of times, God will use a trial to develop those things within us. Because it's not until we become dependent on Him that are these things allowed to transpire in our lives. Trials. They help demonstrate our faith in the Lord. When these things are allowed to come into our lives, it is at that point, it is at that time that our faith in the Lord is demonstrated. It's not, on, it's not demonstrated for us to see. But it's demonstrated for the benefit of others to see. And to recognize that faith. Thirdly, trials are allowed to come our way because they help to develop future ministry. Because when something comes our way and we are able to trust in the Lord in it and to uh, take those things and allow that trust, that faith, that uh, uh, dependence on God to come out of us in the midst of those trials, then it opens up an avenue for others to see and to be able to perhaps realize in their mind that if he or she can keep trusting in the Lord even in the midst and in spite of that trial, then I ought to be able to trust Him in my life. And that ministry, you know, when we think ministry, ministry is nothing more than an avenue in which we can proclaim God. And if we can proclaim God through the, the very trials in our life, then God has given us a ministry. He's using you and I. As our fortress, God is our place of retreat. He's our place of retreat. 
He's a place that we can always come back to. He is a place that we can always come to. When the going gets tough, when the tough gets going, that's where we are. We are in our place of retreat. That is our fortress. We can find security and rest in Jesus when the storms of life are raging against us and our trials seem so overwhelming against us. We have a place that we can go that is a place of rest. And it is the Lord Jesus. He is such a place. Satan, he's out to destroy us. He's out to destroy our testimony. He's out to destroy our witness. He's out to destroy our faith. And I give you this morning that He is real. He is just as God is real, Satan is real. Just as God is good, Satan is bad. The book of Ephesians. Chapter number 6. In verse number 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, I give you today that we can retreat to our Lord in prayer and we can rest in the very promises of His Word. When, when all of these things, when, when, it, when we're wrestling with the principalities and the powers of the darkness and, and the things of this world and everything that seems to be getting us down, we can find rest and comfort and joy and peace in the Lord Jesus. We can rest in the promises of His Word. As our fortress. We can stand to resist Satan in the power and in the protection of the Lord Jesus. We can go back to Ephesians chapter 6. And we, we go back to verses 10 and 11. And he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Do you know that God has enabled you and I to be able to stand against all that Satan can bring against us? Now, it doesn't mean that it may be uh, always a time of great things because the devil's trying to get to us. He's trying to get at us. He's trying to, to destroy us. And you know that there, there's no song or, or there's a song that says that, that the devil comes to, to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. But you know, 
Boy, through Jesus, we ought to be we ought to be serving Him. I a, a, a notice that His kingdom is on the attack, and we're going to go get everything that He has taken from us. If He's taken our joy from us, we're going to go get it. If He's taken our peace from us, we're going to go get it. If He's taken our song from us, we're going to go get it. And we can do those things because God is our fortress. Because God gives us the power and His protection to do it. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, our problem today is that we don't use the power that God has put at our disposal to live for Him. You know, we, we don't do this. Instead, instead we dabble with temptation. And we, we drop our guard. And we develop inconsistencies in our lives. Now just as the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, now our Lord Jesus enables us to stand so that we can take back what He's taken from us. And that we can stand against Him no matter what He can try to put our way. And that we can let Him know that you're not going to destroy me because I stand upon that rock of the Lord Jesus. I am living in within the very confines of His fortress. You have no power against me. You know, as a soldier looks out from the wall of the fortress for the enemy, Christ helps us to be on the lookout for the enemy as well. Now, our enemy comes in many forms and many fashions and many images today. That that may seem good for us may be bad. We need to be thanking the Lord Jesus that we we have that ability of discernment that He gives us. Back in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 5 uh, it says Bible says, but watch that in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. There are things that we ought to be on the lookout for that tend to, to come our way. And if we would watch after them then we are able to do the things that God sets for us. My goodness. Some of the things that we're to be looking out for, we're to be on the lookout for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Man, I, 
You know, there are some that are looking for him to come the first time. I'm looking for him to come the second time. In Matthew 25 and in verse number 13, he says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. When's he coming? I don't know. But I do know one thing. We're to be watching for him. We're not to be caught off guard by him. We're to be anticipating him to the very joy and the peace that, that God can give us about it. We're to be on the lookout. for slothfulness and apathy in our lives. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number uh, verses 5 and 6 it says, you, Ye are all the children of light and the children of day. Ye are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Boy, you know, we're supposed to be looking and anticipating, and then we need to be uh, to, to not be slothful in the things we're doing of the Lord. But we're to be doing them to the utmost of our ability. And why, why have apathy in our life? The, the things of, of not caring, oh, whatever, you know. But what we're supposed to be doing is looking out for it to come. And to see those things as they may be able to creep up in our lives that we're to put a stop to them. We're to be on the lookout for sinful snares and traps that may come our way. Matthew 26, verse 41. He says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing Sadly to say, the flesh is weak. We may have a spirit that says, you know, I, I don't want to be tempted. I don't want to go into those temptations to do those things. But my flesh is so weak. Well, you know, we have someone that we can count, that we can depend on, because he is our fortress that can help us. Because our flesh is weak. We're to be on the lookout for satanic discouragement, depression, and destruction. You know, we talked about the devil and what he what he has a mind for. And in 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8, it tells us that we are to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, we could go back to Job chapter 1. And we could go back into uh, verse 6 and 7. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. 
He's like a roaring lion, just walking about, just wondering who is going to be his next meal. What is going to be his next meal? You know, he walks in the in the you know, on the plain there, and he looks and he casts an eye out for the wayward one. And he thinks to himself as he's licking his lips and he says, Oh, there's something. Well, you know, that's what the devil does for you and I. He looks out there. And when we don't trust the Lord to be our rock, when we don't trust the Lord to be our fortress, the devil licks his lips and he says, that's the one that I can get to. That's the one. You know, we are to be on the lookout (laughs) for stupidity and pride in our lives. I'm sorry, but, you know, that's the way it is. We're to be on the lookout for those things. For stupidity and pride. 1 Corinthians 10, and in verse number 12, it says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Now, that verse, you know, well, what does stupidity got to do with it? Well, in that verse, it tells us that if we're looking and we think we're more than what we are, boy, you know, we need to be watching out on those things. Only the stupid is going to think he's more than what he is. And it all comes from that pride. We're prideful creatures. Especially here in America. To the rest of the world, we have a lot of things to be prideful about. Do you realize today, there are a lot of people all across this world that don't have a place like we have to come worship. And they're not even allowed to worship in a lot of places. In the world today, there's not a lot of people that has a house or a place to live like we have. They have some old cardboard box someplace, if they have that at all. To a lot of people, there's a there there there's a, a lot of times that they go hungry. We throw away more food than what they can eat in a month. And we'll throw it away in a week. We have so many things to be grateful for, not prideful for, but grateful for. And because of of all these things that we're supposed to be looking for, we must realize that the fortress is only as strong as its construction. I don't know about you today, but if an enemy was coming to attack me, I want to get behind a strong fortress. Amen? I don't want a cardboard uh, fortress. But I want one that's that's uh, made out of stone or concrete or, or something that's strong. Not something that will deteriorate and disintegrate in a rainstorm. One weak, unguarded place makes the fortress ineffective and leads to defeat. 
There are times in battle. And, and, and we, we've seen it over and over again. And perhaps we've seen it on shows and perhaps we've seen it on documentaries. Perhaps we've been there. But it, boy, in, in the heat of battle, if you don't take and reinforce a certain place that's your stronghold, it won't hold. Because the devil's always going to come to your weakest point. The devil is always going to come to our weakest point to try to get to us. If our fortress is built poorly, it won't stand. But when it comes to Christ, strength and security are not a problem. He is God. Christians are defeated because they open the door to enemies that will destroy them. We have, we do a lot of the times, we'll open that door and let him in. Now there are, there are a lot of times you've seen them on uh, I, I, different perhaps crime shows on TV or whatever, you know, and they'll be doing their investigation and say, hmm, it looks like, you know, the person laying dead on the floor. Well, they must have knew their attacker because we don't see any signs of forced entry. We don't see any any signs that, that the door was kicked in, a glass was broken, or anything else. They must have just let him right in. Well, you know, sadly to say, in the Christian life, that's the same thing we do a lot of the time. We let those things that can that can destroy us, we just let them right on in. We don't rest in the power and the security of the Lord Jesus. We just let them in to our lives. But you know, when we trust in Jesus, we don't have to work. We don't have a problem. For Jesus is God. God delivered David from a lion. He delivered David from a bear. He delivered David from Goliath. He delivered David from Ishba ben uh, And He delivered David from Saul. And He can be our deliverer as well. As Superman was always alert to the needs of Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen, our Lord is alert to our needs as well. Jesus is our Superman. And we are His Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, we got to realize that it, it, it's not us, it's Him. Do you realize what the acronym of grace is? G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Everything we have that God affords to you and me was afforded to us because of Jesus. He's like the U.S. cow. The Lord comes, He shows up right at this. 
exact right moment, at the right time, the right place in our lives. He rescued Hagar with water in the desert. He rescued David when he was surrounded by Saul's army by using the Philistine invasion. He protected Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, he spared Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He rescued Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah. He freed Peter from prison on the night before his execution. Paul was spared from shipwrecks at sea. The Lord is our deliverer from the penalty of sin, death, and hell today. It's all Him. Second Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Uh, verse ten says, "Who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver? In whom?" We trust that He will yet deliver us. That's talking about Jesus. It's talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's talking about our great Redeemer. You know, the Lord is our deliverer from temptations and sinful things. Back in... Uh, and in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse uh, 13. He says, uh, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear. Second Peter and uh, chapter 2 and in verse number 9 it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The Lord knows what He's doing. And He knows how to do it. He is our deliverer. He is our rock. He is our fortress today. I guess it boils down to His Lord, your deliverer today. Is He the fortress of your life? today. And if he's not, he can be. See, that's what's so great about him. It, when, when we're not what we ought to be, we can be. Because of him. When our life isn't what it ought to be, but it can be. Because of him. When trouble comes our way and it gets us down, we don't have to stay down. Because of Him. We can trust Him. Charles Spurgeon once said, It is not your hold of Christ that saves, but it is His hold of you. So, you know, in this Thanksgiving season, I give you today that we have the ability to be thankful for all the things that He has done for you and me. Now, I hope and I pray this Thanksgiving season that 
we will just remember all that He has done for us. He is our deliverer. He is our rock. He is our fortress. And we can trust and rely on Him. Let's all stand. Dear Lord, we do come thanking You, Lord, this morning for Your many blessings. Lord, we thank You for the things that, uh, Lord, that, that You've done and are doing and going to do. Lord, we lift up uh, all the, uh, the things, Lord, that, that we don't do. And yet, Lord, we ask that as we trust in You, You would allow these things to transpire in our lives. Lord, for You're our rock. You're our fortress, our stronghold in a time of trouble. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that You would just reveal to us Your strength and Your power and Your love and Your compassion for us. Lord, use this invitation time. Lord, it, it, it's a moment, it, it's an opportunity for us to just recognize You today and our need of You. And Lord, I pray in this, this, uh, this time, Lord, that, that You would use it, that You would speak to our hearts, Lord, and give us the, the strength to just call upon your name. To just call upon you. And to trust you to be our rock and our fortress this morning. Page 269. Why do you wait, dear brother? But why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in his sacrifice throne. Why not, why not, why not come to him now? Why not, why not, why not come to him now? What do you hope, dear brother, to gain by further delay? There's no one to save you but Jesus. There's no one other way but his way. Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? You know, why don't, at times, you know, we could just come to Him. Seeking Him for all that He is. And realize that Hey, our lives would be better for it. And, and just hope and pray for His protection and His power. Um, we'll be back in the book of Hosea this evening. And, and I hope that you'll uh, be with us. Um, Philip, would you dismiss us this morning, please? Amen.